Thank you for joining us. Merci d'être parmi nous aujourd'hui. We are here today to provide an update on the City of Ottawa's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour vous fournir une mise à jour sur les mesures prises par la Ville d'Ottawa pour faire face à la pandémie de COVID-19. My name is Kina Leclerc and I will be your moderator. Je m'appelle Kina Leclerc et je serai l'animatrice de cette séance. Today we will be hearing remarks from Mayor Le Maire, Jim Watson, followed by Councillor Keith Eglai, Chair, Ottawa Public Health Board, Le Conseiller Keith Eglai, President du Conseil de Santé d'Ottawa, Dr. Dr. Vera Etches, Chief Medical Officer of Health, Médecin Chef en Santé Publique, and Anthony DiMonte, General Manager of Emergency and Protective Services, Directeur Général des Services de Protection et d'Urgence. Available for questions from the media following the statements, we also will have, disponible pour répondre aux questions des médias, nous accueillerons aussi, Chief Peter Slowly, Ottawa Police Service, Chef du Service de Police d'Ottawa. After we hear from the panelists, we will take questions from the media. We will begin now with remarks by Mayor Jim Watson. Thank you very much, Akina. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue, welcome, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, begin by obviously commenting on the last couple of days. It's been a flurry of, a flurry of activity over the course of uh, the last four or five days. And I want to thank the province uh, on a couple of fronts for pulling back on the uh, proposal of random checks uh, by our police service. Uh, obviously, there is not a lot of support for that. And I appreciate the province listening to our chief of police, myself, other mayors and other chiefs across uh, the province. Also pleased the province has um, uh, reconsidered the closure of play structures around uh, uh, Ottawa and Ontario. This is welcome news, obviously, for many residents, particularly families with kids, and uh, recognize um, that uh, this was uh, something that I know a number of my other colleagues from around the province uh, engaged with the province, as did I. And we appreciate them uh, pulling back on that particular uh, issue. I'm also pleased to report that as of today, our park ambassadors are back out in select parks around the, the city. Park ambassadors will walk around uh, these parks in pairs. And we'll be giving helpful guidance on keeping your time in the park safer for everyone. You'll be able to spot them as they'll be wearing either their green shirts or red jackets and identify themselves as City of Ottawa staff. These park ambassadors are not enforcement officers and they do not hand out tickets. They're existing city employees that are being seconded to this particular role. They are live on the spot resources that help residents by offering valuable information, answering your questions and helping to explain any confusion that uh, might be around when it comes to uh, the city's parks uh, or the province's stay at home order. Je souhaite remercier les ambassadeurs pour leurs efforts d'éduquer les résidents et de promouvoir l'activité saine et de sécurité dans nos parcs. Ici Ottawa. As many of you are aware, as part of the province's enhanced restrictions under the stay at home order, they've also required the checkpoints be set up between the Ontario and Quebec border. As we saw over the first day in particular, uh, with the checkpoints being up and, and running, travelers were experiencing significant delays at all Ottawa area interprovincial crossings, the five bridges and the two ferry crossings. Uh, yesterday, I wrote to Minister Jones and requested that she revisit. Uh, the request for our police services, it was costing a significant amount of money, it was not particularly effective, and the letter outlined the detrimental impact that this is having on thousands of healthcare workers. We know there's uh, between 6,000 and 6,500 6, healthcare workers that work in long-term care, hospitals, uh, retirement homes, clinics here on the Ottawa side. And as you saw, those checkpoints were causing hours of delay of people getting into their essential work. And, uh, and quite frankly, uh, many of these people were late for working in intensive care units or helping the elderly uh, in retirement homes. So yesterday, I was very pleased to see the notice from Chief Slowly, and I thank him that the uh, Ottawa Police will no longer maintain a 24-7 presence at the interprovincial crossings, uh, the five interprovincial bridges, as well as the two ferries. The OPS will instead deploy officers on a rotating schedule of checkpoints moving throughout the city um, of Ottawa uh, interprovincial crossings on a daily basis until the expiry of the provincial order. Alors, le SPO va stationner les policiers à des ponts sur un horaire de cycle à travers uh, les points d'entrée jusqu'à la fin de décret provincial. Uh, the OPS will continue to work with uh, OPH, the City of Ottawa, the City of Gatineau, and 
the Ontario Provincial Police and other partners conduct daily assessments on the border operations. I understand that the sudden changes from the province can in fact be confusing, but I want to take this opportunity to stress that you uh, follow, please follow uh, the public health guidelines and in doing so you'll be helping to protect yourself and of course your loved ones. Stay home for essential reasons, keep your close contacts to those only in your household. When you leave the house, bring a mask with you, wear it. Uh, if, it's, if you're indoors or in situations where you'll we'll, we'll be interacting with people uh, outdoors, uh, stay home if you're feeling sick and when you're eligible, please sign up for a vaccine. I've added my name to a wait list at a local pharmacy to receive the AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca vaccine. And I hope to be able to schedule an appointment in the next coming days or a week or so. Now on the subject of vaccinations, I'm pleased to announce that thanks to the great efforts of all of our healthcare professionals, our paramedics, our staff, we have administered over 284,000 vaccines to date. Uh, as of uh, Monday, we, were, we surpassed delivering doses to 25% of the population over the age of 16. So that's pretty remarkable, 25% uh, of our, our residents uh, over 16 who wanted a, a vaccine have been vaccinated and kudos to our, our staff uh, for doing such a great, great job. Um, it's been a difficult year. I don't have to repeat that. Uh, everyone knows that it's been a challenge economically, socially, mentally, uh, physically. And uh, there's no question we are making some progress, but we still have a long way to go. We understand that everyone is getting tired and that COVID fatigue is uh, setting in. C'est clair que plusieurs sont fatigués et que le virus nous pousse aux limites. Every person vaccinated, of course, brings us one step closer to bringing the pandemic to an end. So I want to thank everyone for their efforts today. In the meantime, I urge everyone to please continue to stay at home and stay the course and follow public health guidelines. Great information on ottawapublichealth.ca or uh, ottawa.ca. It's in everyone's best interest, obviously, to stay home as much as possible. I'll limit your personal contacts to those that you live with. Merci beaucoup, and I'll hand it over to Councillor Keith Engline, the Chair of Ottawa Public Health, who's putting in uh, lots of uh, hours. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, Quay. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. It's only Wednesday, but there's been lots of new developments regarding the vaccine and new public health measures this week. It started with the provincial announcement on Friday, then the welcome news that those 40 plus would be eligible to receive AstraZeneca in pharmacies on Sunday. And the next day, we had a very lengthy but very worthwhile Board of Health meeting where we heard concerns from those working in the childcare sector and other essential workplaces. There's, a, there's lots of information circulating, but I wanna drive home a few main points today. The first is that Ottawa's hospitals are still struggling and to help support our healthcare sector we need to do all we can to adhere to basic public health measures, such as masking, staying six feet, six feet apart when interacting with those outside of your household, and staying home when sick. In this spirit, yesterday, on behalf of Dr. Etches and Ottawa's Board of Health, I submitted a letter to the Premier requesting additional COVID-19 restrictions and enforcement. The request was made to limit the places where people come into close contact with people outside of their household. We're trying to work together to prevent outbreaks before they happen, instead of, instead of acting after the fact. Dr. Etches will speak to this more shortly, but we hope to receive a response from the province in the following days. As the mayor has mentioned this week, Section 22 order was issued that makes masks mandatory while playing on or within five meters of the play equipment at city parks. We know that many parents and children in Ottawa are already wearing masks whenever they are in public, but this order helps to ensure that children can still use play structures and areas while being as safe as possible. The past few weeks have been extremely difficult for families, and we know many are struggling with distance learning at home while trying to balance other professional and personal responsibilities. This is a very difficult time. I'd like to thank all the parents, guardians, educators, and childcare workers in Ottawa who have continued to persevere. I wanna thank all the kids in Ottawa as well that have done their best to, uh, to put up with all these changes and restrictions that I'm sure are, are strange and foreign to them uh, in their childhood. In supporting and reinforcing public health guidance, you are making a difference in helping to keep others in the community safe. Thank you for all that you do. And lastly, get your vaccine. 
AstraZeneca is now available to residents 40 years of age and older at local pharmacies. Please encourage your friends, families, colleagues, neighbors, everyone you know to please get a vaccine when they become eligible. So you've heard me say many times in the past few weeks, I got my vaccine last week and have no regrets. A list of participating Ottawa pharmacies is available on the provincial website. And as the mayor indicated, it's quite easy to go online and, and pre-register for an appointment. If you're under 40 and would like to know if you're eligible for a vaccine based on other health conditions, you can visit Ottawa Public Health's website to see if you're eligible and pre-register for a vaccine if you qualify. Thank you to all residents for your continued support of OPH. Working together, we can get through this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Eglai. We will now be hearing from Dr. Vera Etches. Well, good afternoon, Quay. Well, bonjour. And uh, as Chair Eglai mentioned, a letter was sent yesterday to the Premier requesting an urgent review of all businesses and services that continue to have workers at work in the workplace to amend the language in the Ontario Regulation 82-20 regarding school closure to provide greater clarity that as many students as possible uh, should be participating in virtual learning and to improve the enforcement provisions under the Reopening Ontario Act and the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. The reason for this request is that workplaces continue to be places where people come in contact, in close contact with each other and where COVID-19 is transmitted. The milieu de travail continue d'être des endroits où les gens entrent en contact étroit avec les autres et où COVID-19 est transmis. And with the current pressures on our healthcare system, we do need to flatten the curve. We need to turn the curve again by decreasing every opportunity for transmission. And of course, workers that are affected need to have access to financial supports. In Ottawa, the number of businesses that have more than five people testing positive is limited. They include a lab, a gym, two transportation operations, two construction companies, and five restaurants offering takeout. And along with restaurants, offices, are also close to the top of the list for workplaces that have experienced outbreaks. And sports and recreation activities are also a top contributor. So at this point, under provincial regulation, people who can work from home must work from home. And sports and recreation activities should be with members of one's household only. And where people cannot be distanced from others, wearing masks is key to stopping transmission of the variants of concern, which are now making up close to 100% of what is found in our wastewater when we look at all of the COVID. En vertu de la réglementation provinciale, les personnes qui peuvent travailler à la maison doivent travailler à la maison et les activités sportives et récréatives doivent se dérouler avec des membres de leur ménage. Lorsque les gens ne peuvent pas être éloignés des autres, le port de masque est essentiel pour arrêter la transmission des variants préoccupants. C'est presque 100% dans le, de la COVID dans notre eau usée qui est une variant préoccupant. And so additionally, I have provided instructions to to businesses uh, previously uh, to inform Ottawa Public Health when two or more people test positive within their workplace within 14 days of each other. Ottawa Public Health's case management team continues to be able to work with these businesses and residents to manage these situations so that further transmission is prevented. Our situation in Ottawa is unique. We're not seeing the same trends of workplace transmission and the scale of outbreaks the size of outbreaks that other places like Toronto and Peel are experiencing. Notre situation à Ottawa est unique. Nous ne voyons pas la même tendance de transmission en milieu de travail et l'ampleur des éclosions que d'autres endroits comme Toronto et la région de Peel. So we continue to monitor the situation. We're looking at everything locally as well as across the province. 
and we're evaluating all possible options to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our communities based on the data available. So I look forward to further discussions with the province about how to best implement uh, any new measures here. I also wanna take a moment to remind people who have received a vaccine and uh, whether it's one dose or, or both, I, I want to speak to people who will be receiving a vaccine soon. Um, to let you know that we, we all do, after we're vaccinated, need to continue to keep up with behaviors like maintaining distance from others, wearing a mask, and keeping your hands clean when with people outside of your households until more people are fully vaccinated. People have tested positive for COVID-19 in the days following immunization as the vaccine takes time to build immunity and it's not 100% effective. Ceux qui ont reçu un vaccin doivent suivre les mesures de santé publique. Il y, a des gens, il y a des gens qui ont obtenu un résultat positif au test de dépistage de, de la COVID-19 dans les jours suivant l'immunisation, car le vaccin prend du temps à développer une immunité et n'est pas efficace à 100%. With high levels of COVID in our community, we expect to continue to see a small number of vaccinated people test positive. After you receive your vaccine, you will also have information on post-vaccine behaviors given to you. Please read this and follow the guidance. Après avoir reçu votre vaccin, vous recevrez de l'information sur les comportements post-vaccination. Veuillez lire ce document et suivre les directives. Taking these precautions will assist the whole community to drop the level of COVID-19 as quickly as possible. Lastly, I also want to acknowledge the significant challenges that so many people are facing right now. Employment options are reduced, financial stress is high. There are emergency financial supports available from the city. And I encourage people to reach out to help each other before an emergency occurs. With schools going back to virtual learning for most this week, many families are under the stress of trying to figure out how to work and oversee online schooling. Setting realistic expectations and flexibility from employers are important to make it through this period. No one is perfect or able to do two jobs at once. We are currently under a stay at home order except for essential reasons but not everyone is safe at home. So I wanna say leaving a violent relationship to get to safety is an essential reason to leave home. Services are open and available to offer space to those who need it. Nous sommes actuellement sous un décret ordonnant de rester à domicile, sauf pour des raisons essentielles. Mais tout le monde n'est pas en sécurité à la maison. Et quitter une relation violente pour se mettre en sécurité est une raison essentielle de quitter la maison. Les services sont ouverts et disponibles pour offrir de l'espace à ceux qui en ont besoin. Violence is never okay. We all have the right to feel safe and live a violence-free life. And survivors of domestic violence and abuse can get support through a number of community resources, including Ottawa's text and online chat tool, unsafeathomeottawa.ca, which is available seven days a week from 8.30 in the morning until midnight. You can send a discreet text to 613-704-5535 if you need help. This service is now available in over 70 languages. Thanks to the support, of Immigrant Women Services Ottawa. So as always, look out for one another, stay safe, be kind. Thank you, merci, miigwech. Well, Kina, I'm, I think I'm next, so I'll, I'll go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Bon après-midi tout le monde. Uh, the province of Ontario has extended its stay-at-home order last week and added additional restrictions. 
Le gouvernement de l'Ontario a prolongé le décret ordonnant de rester à domicile la semaine dernière et en plus ajouté certaines restrictions importantes. In its announcement last Friday, the province is extending the emergency declaration and extending the stay-at-home order for two weeks for a total of six weeks, limiting outdoor gatherings to members of your own household, closing many outdoor recreational amenities such as golf courses, sports fields, ball diamonds, basketball and tennis courts, reducing the capacity of retail stores such as grocery stores, pharmacies and big box stores to 25%, capping places of worship to 10 people indoors, and limiting weddings to 10 people both indoors and outdoors, permitting only essential construction activities. This includes residential homes, long-term care homes, hospitals and assessment centers and controls at interprovincial borders, including Ottawa Gatineau. Bylaw and regulatory service officers were out over the weekend doing proactive enforcement of businesses. Les agents des services de règlement municipaux étaient sur le terrain la fin, la fin de semaine dernière pour assurer l'application des proactives des règlements dans les commerces. There were a number of calls related to indoor gatherings and private residences. We want to remind everyone that a stay-at-home order is still in effect. Nous tenons à rappeler à tous les résidents que le décret ordonnant le rester à domicile est toujours en vigueur. This means that you should only be leaving your home for essential reasons. Gatherings, both indoor and outdoor, are limited to members of your own household. The one exception to this is that a single, single people can have exclusive contact with one other household. The purpose of these new restrictions is to keep people at home as much as possible in order to help us stop the spread of COVID-19 and particularly to prevent our hospital system from becoming overwhelmed and save lives. We realize this isn't easy and in fact is very difficult. Nous savons que la situation n'est pas facile et elle même est très difficile pour de nombreuses personnes. We want to see our family members and our friends, but we must continue to follow a stay-at-home order and restrict and the new restrictions for and our public health guidelines. Bylaw and regulatory services will continue to enforce the COVID-related regulations on both a proactive and complaint basis. Enforcement will continue to focus on non-compliant businesses, social gatherings, and as well as violations to the temporary mass bylaw, which council extended until August 26th. In addition, the bylaw officers will be enforcing the Section 22 order issued by our officer, our medical officer of health, which requires wearing masks at or within five meters of playground equipment in all city parks. A team of bylaw enforcement officers will be deployed to conduct dedicated proactive enforcement in our parks. Une équipe d'agents de règlement municipaux sera sur le terrain pour assurer l'application proactive des cibles des règlements dans les parcs de la ville. Now on the vaccine front, we continue to make progress. En ce qui concerne l'administration des vaccins, le travail progresse bien. To date, we've administered a total of 284,597 doses in Ottawa. Last week alone, we administered close to 60,000 doses of the vaccine. We are working hard to get everyone who is eligible vaccinated. Nous travaillons fort pour assurer que toutes les personnes admissibles puissent se faire vacciner. In fact, more than a quarter of our eligible Ottawa residents have received at least one dose. Despite some delays in vaccine supply, we have not canceled any appointments. We've also started administering vaccine to additional sectors of the population, including homebound residents, special education workers, and individuals with high risk health conditions and their caregivers. And as we receive more vaccine supply, we will continue with our vaccine rollout. Of particular note, in a joint statement issued by Dr. Etches and myself on Monday, we announced that all essential workers of any age who want to receive a COVID-19 vaccine are anticipated to be vaccinated with their first dose, likely by the end of June or sooner if vaccine supply increases. This is another important step as we work to ensure that all Ottawa residents who want to receive the COVID-19 vaccine can access it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. I want to thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Mr. DiMonte. My apologies for the technical difficulties.
difficulties. Désolé des problèmes techniques. I will now invite questions from each agency alphabetically. You may ask one question and one follow-up. Nous allons maintenant répondre aux questions de chaque organisme par ordre alphabétique. Vous pouvez poser une question et une question de suivi. Again, a reminder to remain on mute until I invite you to ask your question. So we will now go to Joanne Chianello, who is representing CBC Ontario. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, it's nice to see all of you today. Um, you know, I've been covering City Hall a long time, uh, and I don't really recall uh, a time when so many local authorities kind of openly disagreed with the province and what they were doing. Um, and in some cases here, um, we're not following the directions or have decided to opt out of the directions coming from Queen's Park. And I'm wondering what about those rules prompted the city to do so? What was the tipping point? And if I could hear from the mayor and our medical officer of health and our police chief, that would be terrific. Thank you. Um, thanks uh, very much, uh, Joanne. I'll, um, oops, if I just... Sorry, Mr. Mayor, we there. can hear okay. and see you. Okay, sorry, I pushed uh, a wrong button. Um, there we go. Uh, thanks, Joanne, uh, for the question. Um, I guess, you know, there were a number of issues. There was the um, random check issue that uh, obviously caused great uh, concern by chiefs of police and mayors and police service boards. Uh, there was the playground ban issue. And of course, locally here, there was the Quebec Ontario border crossing um, a declaration and uh, I think you know the, at the end of the day there was just so much uh, opposition to those items that they uh, withdrew the playground uh, edict and they then uh, scaled back the random check issue and for all intents purposes uh, we've gotten rid of the 24-7 uh, traffic jam uh, border check issue uh, between Gatineau and, and Ottawa. So, you know, to the credit of the government, they uh, heard loud and clear from a number of municipalities around Ontario that uh, it was not on to do random checks, that uh, there was no significant risk for children to play on swing sets. And uh, I don't think they had a great grasp of the complexity and the interconnectivity of the economies and communities of Gatineau and Ottawa. Dr. Etches. Yes, so we are not ignoring any provincial regulations or suggesting that any provincial regulations um, uh, shouldn't be followed at this point. Um, today, I think what you see is um, that some of the, the, the measures have been changed, but the principle uh, behind all of them is to limit the places where people come into close contact with each other. And that is important right now. Um, we uh, definitely uh, appreciate there could be, could have been um, some downsides to some of the uh, things that had been on the table. Um, and that uh, is important to, to strike the right balance. Um, we are always concerned uh, with any approach uh, that focuses on enforcement versus supporting people to understand what is needed and to raise awareness of, of the situation and ways to decrease transmission of COVID. So um, that's what Ottawa Public Health is committed to doing uh, with our city partners is make sure people understand why are we asking people to stick to their household members in parks uh, why are we uh, asking people to wear masks when they're in close contact with others? And, um, you know, this, this is the kind of collaborative, uh, you know, approach and, and encouraging approach that I, I think has been effective uh, throughout this pandemic to help people understand what is needed. Uh, Joanne, for my part, um, I'll echo Dr. Etch's uh, comments. Um, we have not uh, rejected uh, the province's directions. We've customized them in coordination and consultation with our local partners, particularly with the risk assessments that we've had from Ottawa Public Health and Dr. Etches. Um, 
in terms of the border operations. Uh, we started out with a commitment to assess on a daily basis. We've done that, we've scaled down our operations, right-sized them and better coordinated them over the course of each 24 hour period, where we feel we've got the right balance between uh, providing a net value of health outcomes, as well as allowing for, um, as the mayor talked about, a very complex uh, interprovincial uh, and economic environment to continue on at optimal levels, again, all geared towards public health outcomes. Um, we did not feel the need and still do not feel the need, again, based on the coordinated efforts between ourselves, Ottawa Public Health, uh, bylaw, we still do not feel the need for the use of any of the additional powers. We believe that the health outcomes that Dr. Etches has outlined can be done with the existing powers and with greater levels of coordination and ultimately greater levels of cooperation from the public around following the health guidelines that have been repeated several times today. And again, I just join in encouraging all people in Ottawa and the surrounding area to do your best to stay healthy, follow the guidelines, and uh, let's help each other through this difficult time. Yeah, thank you all for that. And uh, I appreciate it. Um, uh, this is my follow up on the same theme. I don't mean to suggest, of course, that people are um, going to reject any of the laws or rules, of course, but, you know, we have either through the police force said, we're not going to take on new powers or through our medical officer of health office said, we think there should be more stringent issues. Um, when we hear as residents, as the public, when we hear this little, a bit of a disconnect at the local level between the, and the province, do you think that sows some doubt in uh, the public's, um, in, in their, uh, their trust in the provincial, in, in the provincial government? You know, I mean, are they, how much does the province understand what's happening in this community? You know, we've said we want to uh, vaccinate essential workers, but we saw the province lower the age for AstraZeneca to 40 instead of say opening it up to people who can't stay home to work, right? I mean, what is the message that people are, are getting here? Yeah, I think maybe I'll, I'll start and if others want to join in, Joanne, uh, you brought up a very good point. Uh, one of the things that I've stressed with, uh, with ministers at the provincial level over the last couple of days that I've been speaking to is the need for greater uh, pre-consultation when a major decision like we saw on Friday was coming about. Uh, because I think um, giving us at the, the elected level and police uh, through uh, the chiefs of police and, and police boards and medical officers of health, if we were given a heads up on some of these proposals, I think we could have saved a lot of um, awkwardness and a lot of stress by uh, advocating that you know the police check issue was not going to be uh, well received or necessary the playground situation the same thing and we could have better uh, explained uh, the intricacies of five crossings plus two ferry crossings so you know look at i understand the, the province and the premier under tremendous pressure uh, i wouldn't want to be in his shoes because you know every day um, the numbers go up it's more stress and strain on everyone in the, the whole province. And there's a lot of you know, people that can sit back and, and armchair quarterback. But I think the lesson out of Friday was, uh, please uh, give us a heads up, uh, let us know what you're thinking about, and we could at least offer feedback from our perspective here in Eastern Ontario as to what we think uh, will you know, be well received and will be effective uh, in its implementation. I don't know if Vera or, or um, Peter want to say anything else, or Keith. I, th I think, Joanne, my message to the people in Ottawa is that um, the, the local level here is, you know, is where to turn first to understand what's happening in Ottawa. And the Ottawa Public Health website has the, the most up-to-date and, and, and robust information about COVID in our community and the measures in our community that are needed at this time. And where I think there might need to be changes, if it's an issue that's affecting the province more broadly, like the number of workers that are coming into contact each other with each other, because a lot of workplaces are still open, that's a province-wide issue, then I, I do raise those things to the province. 
If it's an issue specifically to Ottawa, then I'm looking at what can be done in Ottawa and I'll communicate that to the people of Ottawa. And maybe uh, Mr. DeMonte, if he had wanted to comment on that on the vaccine front, um, on, you know, on, on vaccinating essential workers versus just everyone who's 40 and over. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I think the mayor um, talks about it well. You know, they're making decisions with limited um, vaccine for the province of Ontario, and we're trying to target uh, areas of, of greatest need. Um, that's informed by the scientific table, um, by the medical officers of health. Um, I, I just, uh, so perhaps Joanne, you know, it's it's a little bit out of our realm. Uh, we we vaccinate based on the provincial direction, and we have some uh, local um, maneuvering room here, but not much. Uh, I just want to reiterate what um, Dr. Etch has mentioned, uh, and um, Chief Slowly as well, too, on both fronts. On the enforcement fronts, there's a coordinated approach. Uh, Chief Slowly and Bylaw and Dr. Etch's, we um, try to understand how can we best achieve her public health objectives on the enforcement side? And we adapt to do that. And I would tell you on the vaccine side and, and our distribution as well, uh, the collaborative approach uh, led by Dr. Etches, but with our hospital CEOs and the entire team that I, I lead, again, the same objective is there with the vaccine that we have, um, what are the priority groups we have to get to? And that's what we've done since day one. And a quarter of our population has been vaccinated. And when we look at the, the data, the right people have gotten vaccinated. We've you know, done our long-term care, those who are most at risk um, by age category. And now we're starting to filter down into other groups and we have strategies for that. So I, I would just encourage the community here to understand that um, at least locally, uh, and even with input from the province, uh, we very much have our act together and we're working collaboratively to achieving our public health goals and getting our, our community healthy and safe as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, Mr. DeMonte. Thank you, Joanne. We will now be going to Matthew Cooper at CBC Ottawa. Matthew, are you there? Okay, I think you're having some audio issues. If you wouldn't mind just sending me your questions, uh, we will go to Eric O'Brien in the meantime. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good stuff. Um, Dr. Etches, I'm curious to know your thoughts about the uh, key indicators of COVID-19 in the city, like uh, incident rates and the COVID-19 in the wastewater steadily decreasing in the city. I mean, is it a good is it good news? Because, I mean, the, the cases in the city are still really high. Thank you. I, I want to give hope to the people of Ottawa that that rise uh, that we COVID in our community, maybe rising so much now, maybe it's stabilized. I cannot say that uh, we're seeing sufficient signs of the curve turning yet. Um, so the way I look at it is, is the wastewater is showing a decrease in the level of COVID in our community. That's an early indicator that's useful. It's been a less reliable indicator uh, with the spring melt, um, so it's not perfect. The other uh, early indicator is the percentage of people that are testing, testing positive. You know, that was a terrible thing to see it going up and up and up. Over 10% of people that present for a COVID test would end up being positive. Um, that is no, no longer rising to the same degree. It seems to be rising. Um, the other measures are a little dependent on the number of people being tested. So our rates are coming slightly down, but the number of people going to be tested is also down. So we have to take care in interpreting that. Um, and then another very robust measure is our hospitalizations. And that, um, again, all along we've, we said it, it, it's not something you can mistake when you have serious COVID and the really difficult situation, so high in numbers still, uh, however, perhaps a little bit of a stabilization. And so that's certainly what we're watching for. It's a later indicator. It will 
her. Um, but yeah, at, at, at this point, I want to give people measures are working in Ottawa that um, this is difficult to to maintain a stay at home order. But if it's going to get us out of this situation, um, then please take encouragement from this and, and continue doing what. Um, as a follow up to that, now, uh, I'm just curious because, um, like you said before, variants are at uh, almost about 100%. I'm not sure if it's all the cases or in the wastewater. Uh, maybe you could clarify that. Um, but how is the variants spreading in Ottawa? Uh, are you seeing changes to the way it's spreading? How, how is the city keeping track of, of that? Because like I've, I've talked to other health regions, and what they tell me is that um, they're basically seeing a loop of it spreading in the workplace and home at home, even before sometimes people don't even know that they have COVID. Right, so when I refer to the, the indicator that perhaps the variant is almost 100% uh, of the, that virus that's in Ottawa, that is a wastewater signal. Um, so the, the testing that we do, um, not every sample can be screened for a variant. Um, not every sample uh, is, is processed and we, we don't always detect it that way. Uh, so where is, where is COVID being transmitted? The most common place is still in the home among household members. Um, indoor environment, no masks, it, it, you know, it just continues. And, and so how does it get into the home? It is when people are outside of the home in close contact with others. So it would be in workplaces. Um, and I, I listed some of them today where we've seen more transmission, um, you know, construction, um, restaurants that are offering takeout or, or standing out a bit. Um, those are environments where people may not be wearing masks as much in close contact uh, if they're taking a break or um, you know, working hard in environments where it's hard to maintain mask, mask use. Um, the, 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 the outbreaks that we're detecting, I would say a change in what we're seeing is that they're across many different types of workplaces and the number of workplace outbreaks is higher um, than, than previously when we saw more outbreaks in healthcare settings and in schools and in childcare. Uh, of course, with schools closed, we start to see a decline uh, in the outbreaks detected there. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, I kind of. Uh, so, so what you're saying is that it's it's more generalized. It's not one outbreak that's causing multiple cases. You're seeing more across the board cases arising. That's correct. Um, so when, when we have uh, COVID across our community, which we do, there is no one hotspot, right, that we could just target and take care of COVID. No, it's across our whole community and it's across all age groups. Then we see it entering into all types of workplaces uh, where people are still uh, working, not able to work from home. Um, so that, that is more of a, a Ottawa pattern uh, in terms of multiple smaller outbreaks uh, compared to say one particular uh, sector. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will go back to Matthew Cooper to see if the audio was fixed. Hello? Hello, Hi. can you hear me? We can hear you. I, I'm in, amazing. Um, thank you. Uh, so first, I'd, I'd just like to ask, uh, I guess this is, just, this is directed at, at Dr. Etches and Councillor Eglai about the, um, the request for the review uh, about restrictions related to business. Uh, what are you hoping uh, would be coming from that review? What action are you, would you be expecting from the province? And um, I know you were saying that it's less, uh, there's less workplace spread here than in Toronto and Peel, where, where there has been some uh, action from those medical officers of health. But uh, you know, if you don't get the action that you're expecting from the province, what would you, uh, what, what would you be doing then? Well, we sent the letter and. Uh, there have been communications back and forth between OPH and, and the government on this. We're, we're hopeful they'll see the sense of what we're proposing. There were stricter uh, definitions uh, previously uh, as to what essential was. 
uh, we'd like to go back there and possibly tighten it up even further. Um, as we've all said today, our, our hospitals are at a critical situation. We need to do everything we can to keep the hospitals up and running as they should and to protect our community. Uh, so we're hopeful that the province will, will understand where we're coming from uh, and see our request in that light. And um, as I said, we, do, we just sent it off and there have been discussions, so it, it's early days, but we don't wanna let it sit too long. And I'll, I'll, I'll let Dr. Etch speak to what happens if, if we can't come to some sort of a, an agreement with the province on this. Uh, right, so there were a few, few different aspects to, to the motion. The first was about trying to limit the number of businesses that are open that, that where people could, could be exposed to COVID. Um, we're going to continue to use our local data to take a look at what's needed here in Ottawa. Um, so we would, if, if the province, um, you know, is, is not limiting businesses, we need to think about what, what is required here. Um, that uh, motion was, was uh, aimed at the provincial level because it's an issue across the province. Um, the other piece uh, is around um, the ability to enter into businesses to perform inspections and, and even to close businesses in the very rare, you know, it is rare circumstance where there is ongoing non-compliance with uh, regulations and ongoing risk to the public um, for COVID transmission. Uh, that is something that, um, Again, we, we will act on, on that. If, if the province does not uh, do something, we'd be looking at uh, uh, local powers to be able to, to enter into a business and close a business. Um, and then, I, you know, I think the other comment you made was related to uh, Toronto and Peel um, doing some uh, sections, some orders related to workplaces. That is quite a different type of order that uh, they did there. That was um, once there's been an outbreak. So uh, rather than trying to prevent them, uh, it's looking at if, if there's something larger, five or, or more people in a workplace testing positive, then having the ability to, to close those businesses for a period that that's like outbreak management uh, approach. And we feel here in Ottawa, we we have the capacity to do that kind of outbreak management. Um, so our teams are actually looking at workplaces where there's two or more people testing positive, and we do the follow-up to, to control onward uh, transmission. Um, so again, that's something that um, I don't think is needed here at this point, and we'll continue to review our data. All right, and uh, I guess this, this goes to um, some of the hospital uh, capacity issues that, that, that we're seeing and, and some of what the situation is looking like um, in ICUs and, and the COVID patients that are coming in. Uh, there was a tweet this week from the president of the Queensway Carlton Hospital where he said almost half of their COVID patients uh, are, uh, in his words, people of color. Uh, and um, I was wondering if Ottawa Public Health has a, a bit more of what that picture looks like in hospitals across the city uh, and just, uh, I suppose, what your reaction is to, to that observation from the president of the Queensway Carlton Hospital uh, and what, what this situation is looking like, this third wave is looking like uh, on racialized populations in our city. Unfortunately, uh, the observation from the Queensway Carlton Hospital, it, it reflects what we've seen uh, throughout the course of the pandemic. It's what we're working hard to try to change, uh, but it reflects structural inequities that people face uh, when they are newcomers to Canada, to Ottawa, newcomers uh, who have less uh, employment options, who are living with lower incomes, often uh, from racialized communities. Our data that we collected uh, early on, we were um, uh, early in, in recognizing the need to understand who was testing positive, it did demonstrate Black communities in particular and newcomers in particular are definitely at higher risk from COVID. It's why we've had community level uh, operations in partnership with the Ottawa Local Immigration Partnership and community health centers, the Ottawa Health Team, the Kip Sante Ottawa, many partners focused on this, uh, trying to provide more supports to communities where it's harder for people to isolate. We opened a voluntary isolation center, which is still operating actually. So if people 
people are testing positive and they don't want to expose their family and their household, there are free room and board spots uh, still available. Uh, that is a service that exists. Um, we continue to also prioritize these communities for vaccination. And that, again, is ultimately where we're going to be able to best protect people. Um, and and we, we know that the interest is there uh, as the supply grows, that, that will continue to grow as an initiative. And um, so it's, it's, uh, it shows that things aren't fair in our city and we need to work hard to change the systems and the structures that provide more advantage to some populations. And through our pandemic response, you know, it requires partnership with those communities and, and that's the way we're committed to continue to work. Thank you very much. We will now be going to Josh Bringle at CTV Ottawa. Uh, thank you very much. I'm just gonna follow up on Matthew's question about the, uh, the tighter restrictions on businesses. Would Ottawa Public Health and the city like us to go back to what it was a year ago at the start of the pandemic where only restaurants are open for takeout and most non-essential businesses can't even do curbside uh, delivery or pickup? Is that what you're looking at in terms of restrictions on non-essential businesses? Uh, I'll speak if you like. Uh, so, so we, yes, we are looking at, we need to limit the number of places that are open that provide a, a place for COVID to be transmitted. And we need to focus on, on the businesses staying open that provide food, medicine, uh, health and safety services and products really truly essential uh, services that we need. And, and so it would be a, a more limited number. And if I can just add, add quickly, our, our situation now, as we've been saying for some time, is, is worse than it was then. So yes, we would like to go back to at least those conditions to, to respond to this more significant risk in our community. Do you have the power to implement a Section 22 order to shut down all non-essential businesses, or would you like the province to do it province-wide so it's a level playing field? Uh, sort of not exactly either or. What, what I uh, am putting forward is important for uh, more places in the province. So I would say it's most important for the places where COVID is rising rapidly. There are parts of the province where COVID is on the decline again. Uh, there are parts of the province where um, the rates of COVID are not as high. Uh, and so it's, it's really, you know, to take a look at the places where the curve is not flattening, the curve is not turning, what else can be done? And, and that is, that is a, a provincial question. Uh, in, it's out of my jurisdiction, it's, it's broader than that. Um, but I will will uh, continue to think about what can be done here locally, um, what's needed here locally. Thank you very much. So now we will go to Craig Lord at Global News. Uh, thanks very much. Um, Dr. Etchers, this morning at the Transit Commission meeting, um, there was a motion passed that would uh, ask the chair to write to you uh, and also to the Ontario Chief Medical Officer of Health to request that uh, transit workers are put into consideration for uh, priority in the vaccine sequencing. Is that something that you would do, have the power to do, or would otherwise look to influence the province to, to, to raise these frontline workers in the vaccine queue? Yeah, if, if I could start in answering this question by providing a little more context. I, I know Mr. DeMonte spoke about sort of where we're at in the vaccination program. And I, I want to underline that first and foremost, we needed to protect older adults, right? So our vaccine program, the, the mass clinics, trying to get as many people through as we can, focused is still, it's, it's open mostly to people over 60 because they are so much more likely to die if COVID reaches them and there's an infection and they're, they're much more likely to be hospitalized and we have to keep people out of hospital. So that focus on people over 60 has been very, very important. Um, and that, that's in the provincial framework and I agree with it based on the science. Moving on is happening very soon, right? So, so by the end of April, 
in nine days, will have protected most people over 60. And we're able under the provincial framework to turn to some of the other phase two populations. And what we see is we need to, to prioritize people who cannot work from home. And that is in the provincial framework as well, where there is um, a, a provincial direction is to do them in groups first group of people who cannot work from home and then second group of people who cannot work from home. The first group includes people like people who work in food distribution and childcare and education and farms. And the second group right now, that is where people who work in transportation are, are sitting. So I, I do not see under the provincial framework that I can sort of switch people up between groups one and two, but we're always having conversations with the province about what we see locally. Where I have discretion and I'm working not, not just Vera Etches on her own, but, but with input from the community affected through a sequencing task force is to look at this group one, first of all, of, of people who cannot work from home and bring some sequencing to that group. Because there are many, many, many people in those categories and they're all important, we need to consider Who's at more risk of exposure? Um, you know, there's there's different factors that go into trying to narrow it down because we only have so many vaccines a week. We want to do everybody in these groups, and I would encourage, of course, right now, people who cannot work from home to get their vaccine wherever they can if they're eligible by their age or their neighborhood uh, or or their their type of work, that kind of thing. So. Um, so I think the, I'm happy to receive information about people's opinions about what's needed in Ottawa. And I will pass that on to the sequencing task force and, and they will be public about their assessment. And we will be public about how we're moving through the groups of people who cannot work from home. Thank you. And uh, my second question um, would also be to you, I think, Dr. Etches, and it's about hospitals. So I'm wondering if you're hearing from any of the hospital partners in Ottawa, uh, how we're doing in terms of ICU capacity, and uh, if we are still accepting transfers from other regions of the province, or what that looks like right now in our healthcare system. I, I last spoke to my hospital colleagues, I believe it was either yesterday or the day before, and I apologize, there's noise outside. Uh, we did uh, at that time get a sense from, from them that there was some stabilization happening and that they had taken about 20 people uh, from the GTA into Ottawa area hospitals. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Nous allons maintenant passer à Julien Paquette, Le Droit. Euh, bonjour, euh, la... bon, je... je voulais vous demander, euh, Dr. Etches, concernant les, les, la demande que vous faites à la province aujourd'hui. Euh, essentiellement, on comprend, c'est de limiter le nombre de, de, de milieux de travail qui sont ouverts. On s'entend que s'il y a des milieux de travail, des, 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 des des secteurs à bureaux, par exemple, on, on aimerait que ce soit fermé. C'est assez évident, c'est le genre d'environnement où c'est plus facile de faire du travail à, à distance. Euh, où où est-ce que ça laisse des, des, des milieux de travail comme, par exemple, les, des, un entrepôt comme celui d'Amazon qui, qui fait la livraison de services, euh, de, de produits qui, qui peuvent être considérés essentiels? Euh, comment est-ce qu'on... Où est-ce que ça se place? C est, c est, ces, ces entreprises-là qui sont un peu dans une, on va dire une zone grise, là, à savoir, est-ce qu'on est, est qu on donne des produits essentiels ou est-ce que c'est est plutôt euh, non essentiel? Je ne sais pas si vous comprenez ma question. Oui, je pense, oui, et aussi j'ai besoin de réchauffer mon français, je pense, après <rire> une semaine de congé. Mais euh, la question, c'est concernant les, les noms de, des entreprises ouvertes maintenant. Et, euh, ou est-ce qu'il y a l'espace pour réduire le nombre des entreprises ouvertes? Parce que ça, c'est la demande, c'est de réduire les opportunités pour la transmission de COVID-19 dans le milieu de travail. Alors, euh, 
mon recommandation, c'est de concentrer sur euh, les entreprises où ils, ils aident avec le euh, transport et distribution de nourriture, de médicaments, où les services sont importants pour la sécurité et la santé de la population et de réduire les autres. Um. D'accord. Euh, puis j'aimerais, je, je, en, en question suivie, en fait, je ne je, je sais pas exactement comment poser cette question-là, mais euh, considérant qu'il y a environ un mois, on passait en zone rouge, puis euh, on demandait même à la province de, de euh, essentiellement de... de relâcher certaines des mesures associées à la zone rouge, notamment le nombre de, de places qui, qu qui peuvent, de personnes qui peuvent être assises dans un même restaurant en fonction de la, de la grandeur des lieux. Euh, un mois plus tard, on, on est à un point où on demande carrément la, la fermeture du plus grand nombre d'entreprises possible. Est-ce qu'on est, est, est qu a peut-être un peu euh, sous-estimé la... la, la l'avenue de la troisième vague, sous-estimer l'impact des variants, par exemple? Euh, le, le niveau de COVID dans notre communauté pour la zone rouge, c'était 40 pour, pour, par um, 100 000 personnes. Et maintenant, ces jours, maintenant, c'est plus que 200 pour uh, 100 000 personnes. Et c'était un grand changement euh, et c'était euh, un changement qui, qui a euh, arrivé vite et c'était toujours euh, difficile euh, parce qu'on on peut utiliser les moins, les moins euh, non, excusez, on veut utiliser les actions les moins restrictives euh, et Quelquefois, ce n'est pas assez. Et c'est certain avec euh, les variants préoccupants que c'est plus difficile. Ça, ça demande des mesures plus strictes. On a discuté ça avec la population et les gouvernements, c'est certain. Euh, mais ça prend du temps pour, pour tout le monde de voir. C'est vrai qu'on peut avoir une augmentation exponentielle. C'est difficile pour le, le cerveau des humains de, de comprendre le, la possibilité de cette augmentation exponentielle. Et on peut voir la réalité et euh, c'est pourquoi il faut euh, de, plus de, de restrictions maintenant. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Julien. We will now go to Jackie Miller at the Ottawa Citizen. Hi there. I was wondering, Dr. Hutchins, if you've received any tiny little indication from the province on, on when in-person classes might resume for the elementary and secondary school kids, and um, if you have an opinion on what benchmark should be used to, for, for the schools to uh, reopen. Uh, I have not had any conversations with anybody uh, about when schools might be able to reopen. Um, my sense is we need to clearly see that the curve has turned and that we're bringing the level of COVID back down in our community. Um, and then they should be one of the first things to reopen. Um, I also think that it's worth thinking about if it could be done in stages to be able to accomplish schools opening sooner rather than later. Could we get elementary students back to school first, for example, and then move on to secondary students later? Uh, but these discussions are premature today uh, because we, we still haven't turned that curve, unfortunately. And, and I know this, this is a really challenging um, start, right, to, to, to the in-home learning this week. And, uh, It's, it's not encouraging, um, but if we're doing what we do now and, and it holds and we, we continue to see some potential progress, uh, you know, in, in turning that curve, that will lead to those discussions about uh, schools reopening as a first uh, kind of measure. Thank you. And I wanted to ask you about uh, rapid testing in workplaces. I'm wondering what you think the role would be to help prevent 
uh, outbreaks. Uh, it's, it's pretty expensive and complicated for private businesses to do it themselves. Are there any plans for pilot projects like the one in Kitchener where they have city buses parking in front of workplaces uh, with the nurse inside and the workers can just hop in the bus and get tested? Uh, we have been promoting the existing uh, program that's a provincial program uh, where businesses can uh, sign up and get support to be able to, to do rapid testing in their workplaces. Um, much of the, the onus is on the workplace to organize uh, and, um, the, the programs, uh, but there, there is a provincial program that we've been really promoting locally. And, and now we uh, do have other businesses are, are stepping forward locally, indicating they're willing to do this and uh, want to move ahead. And, and I think this is good. I, I think they, the more testing we have, the more COVID we'll find. It will tell us about where COVID is or isn't. Um, you know, it's not a perfect uh, system. We know there are downsides to rapid testing, but it's an additional, uh, you know, measure that can, can give us more information. And so we are yeah, it, right now in conversations with workplaces locally um, to see how, how we can help them to do more of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. We will now be going to Blair Crawford at the Ottawa Sun. Uh, hello, my question uh, concerns uh, construction sites. I think Dr. Etch just said that a couple of the outbreaks had, in, had uh, involved construction sites. I live in Bay Ward, which is, seems to be entirely under construction between road work and the LRT and condo construction. But I have seen that there are some sites at uh, some of the malls where there, there are workers on site right now. And I'm wondering uh, why those are exempt, or if they're exempt and who's responsible for monitoring and shutting them down. Uh, perhaps I can I can assist and then Dr. Etches if she wants to add. Um, so there are exemptions to the uh, construction, as I indicated, uh, residential homes, uh, projects for hospitals, long-term care facilities, and you mentioned our LRT are exempt. Um, they, they have to follow the rules. Uh, it would be the Ministry of Labor, and as a matter of fact, last week in the Ministry of Labor was here in town. Um, visiting those sites to ensure that those employers are following the rules and the guidelines set out by the province. Um, bylaw would have a limited role in that. Um, if, we, if we got a complaint, we would be normally uh, forwarding that to our colleagues at, um, at the Ministry of Labour. I don't know if Dr. Etches wants to talk about how, I, I mean, she may not know how the, how the province decided yet. So it's the province that made those decisions of, as who was exempt uh, with regards to. Yeah, I might uh, yeah, just yeah, just add uh, Blair. Sorry, uh, Blair, I just might add, just out of uh, coincidence, last week I had a briefing on the East-West uh, LRT and the senior management team uh, proudly uh, talked about that they have not had one single COVID-19 case uh, on their work site. And uh, that's a, a long work site, as you know, for, uh, all the way to uh, the East End and the West End. So that's encouraging. And uh, we encourage all employers to be as responsible and to ensure that their workers are doing uh, socially distancing as best as possible. Sometimes that's almost impossible when you're on a construction site, but also wearing um, your masks. And, and I, I live near Byron Avenue and I go by it almost every day. And uh, I think with one or two exceptions, I've seen every employee on that site uh, masked up. Yeah, yeah, this specific site I was talking about was uh, at Carlingwood Mall, the construction that un is underway there, and I saw workers uh, there, and, and I thought the Premier had specifically said that mall construction was uh, non-essential. Yeah, you'd have to I'd really have to go to the province. It's uh, the province that uh, determines what is essential construction and what is not. We know one of the first things we asked was where are our transit and road projects and, and path projects uh, essential and, and the answer came back from the province that they were as for the others uh, you'd have to ask the Ministry of Labour. Thanks. Uh, okay my follow-up question is uh, and I, I believe this is correct but the current RT uh, the seven-day average for RT in Ottawa is uh, 0 0.95 I think that's right and I'm just wondering when was the last time that it was below one and uh, again similar to a question that was asked earlier what Dr. Etches makes of uh, 
of whether we've turned the curve and, and what might be contributing to, to the good news. Thank you. I will reiterate that I can't say we've turned the curve, but I can give you hope that the measures are working, um, that the rise has slowed and we might be going horizontal. Uh, things might be stabilizing. Um, the, the curve that shows the reproductive number of the number of people, if one person tests positive, how many other people go on to be positive. Um, if it's below one, then it means the pen, you know, the, the COVID level is decreasing. If it's above one, it's growing. I'm looking very carefully at our, our dashboard to see when it was last below one. And I believe that was February uh, 28th or around there, 20, February 27th. It looks like it was just below one. Um, so it's been, it's been a little while. Uh, it's encouraging to see that. It's not a perfect measure um, because it, it is still tied to testing. Uh, as um, uh, the, the, as is the rate in our community. If the number of people being tested has dropped, uh, we might not be detecting as much COVID. And that, that means, um, you know, again, it, the, the reproductive number might not reflect everything exactly in our community. Um, so we're looking for a decline in hospitalizations to really um, underline and, and confirm that we're on the right track. Um, but uh, I, I do think, you know, that uh, it is worth um, you know, understanding these are difficult measures that are in place. Uh, we will get out of them uh, if we hold hold to them, uh, and, and the, the sooner sooner the better. And can I just clarify? When you talked about the hospitalizations going down, are you do you um, recognize that there are patients coming in from out of town, the twenty from GTA, and and sort of that's correct. Our website actually, uh, when we measure hospitalizations, it's it's reported only for people who are residents of Ottawa. So that trend won't be disturbed by any other patients we take in from Gatineau or or the GTA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nous allons maintenant passer à Mama Afou à Radio Canada. Euh, oui, euh, vous m'entendez, ça va? Oui, on vous entend. Excellent. Donc, euh, ma première question va aller à Dr. Vera H. Euh, concernant, en fait, euh, la lettre euh, que vous avez envoyée euh, 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 au Premier ministre là, par rapport au, au plus de restrictions, notamment la surveillance euh, des, des lieux de travail, euh, pourquoi vous avez... Pourquoi avez-vous décidé d'envoyer cette lettre alors que vous dites vous-même que la situation commence à se stabiliser ici à Ottawa. J'ai envoyé cette lettre parce que la situation en Ontario est sérieuse. C'est clair. Euh, dans les lieux aussi à, à Toronto, à Peel, le taux de COVID-19 ne diminue pas. Et c'est important de, de réduire les opportunités pour la transmission de COVID-19. Uh, et c'est clair ici aussi à Ottawa, s'il si y a moins d'opportunités pour la transmission, ça va aider aussi de tourner la courbe. Uh, mais c'était une, une uh, lettre pour le premier ministre parce que c'est un défi pour la province. Est-ce que, est que vous pouvez juste me donner les détails de ce que vous avez demandé dans cette lettre en français? Je sais que vous l'avez dit en anglais, mais ça en aurait besoin en français. Qu'est-ce que vous avez dit uh, principalement dans cette lettre? Oui, euh, aussi je peux euh, euh, fournir, je pense, une traduction euh, de, de la direction de la santé, de, 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 euh, le conseil de la santé. Euh, je peux juste euh, faire cette note pour l'équipe d'envoyer euh, les, 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 les mesures en français. Euh, mais le grand sommaire, c'est que au cause de le niveau de COVID-19 et le, le réalité qu'il y a beaucoup de transmission dans les milieux de travail maintenant, il faut réduire les opportunités pour cette uh, transmission par uh, limiter le nombre des entreprises ouvertes uh, et concentrer sur les, les entreprises qui, qui um, sont associés avec la distribution de la nourriture et les médicaments et qui aident avec la santé et la sécurité de la, de la population. Euh, et euh, c'est quelque chose que la province a fait déjà et euh, c'est euh, 
possible de, de réduire le, la liste euh, des, des entreprises essentielles. Merci beaucoup. Ma, ma question suivie irait au maire Jim Watson et au chef de police, M. Slowly. Par rapport, j'aimerais avoir une réaction de votre part par rapport au verdict de Derek Chauvin. Et je vous demande, M. Slowly, si cela va pousser la police à changer ses pratiques. Oh, uh, Mr. Mayor, you're just muted. Excusez-moi, oui, certainement, je suis d'accord et, et uh, content avec la décision de le système uh, juridique de l'États-Unis. Uh, ça, c'est la, la, la décision correcte. Uh, tout le monde a vu la vidéo et c'est vraiment une tragédie pour uh, M. Floyd et, et son famille. Et um, uh, comme je dis, uh, maintenant, je pense que M. Biden et, et ton, ton cabinet fait des choses pour améliorer la situation euh, avec euh, certaines communautés euh, dans, dans les États-Unis. Et peut-être que ce uh, Chief Slowly, uh, if you could just offer your comments on, um, on the uh, decision by the U.S. courts in Mr. Floyd's um, uh, situation uh, where the constable was found guilty and any changes that you uh, envision in uh, the Ottawa police. Merci beaucoup uh, pour votre question. Um, en anglais, s'il vous plaît. <coughs> uh, former police officer Derek Chauvin was convicted on all three counts of criminal charges against him in the murder of George Floyd. Uh, the Ottawa Police Service and all of its members stand with the, all the communities who've been impacted by this tragic set of circumstances. The death of George Floyd, the resulting demonstrations, the criminal prosecution and other events still unfolding in real time in Minneapolis, across the United States, here in Canada and here in the nation's capital. The circumstances of George Floyd's murder shone a spotlight on the historical and current reality of systemic racism in policing and in our justice system. As a police service, and as our police service members, we're sworn to serve and protect the community all members of the community without fear, without favor, and without bias. We're supposed to be part of the solution and not part of the core problem. Our oath of office requires us to demonstrate the highest levels of duty of care and the highest levels of public trust. There is an increasingly urgent need for police services to form true community partnerships, like what we've been talking about here with Ottawa Public Health and other not-for-profit sector partners. Through these partnerships, we can better prevent crime, reduce the number of people who enter the justice system, co-produce improved community safety and well-being, advance a more just and inclusive society, especially for those who are most vulnerable, most victimized, and often the most racialized members of society. Indeed, we can see from this pandemic that those who often have the least often suffer the most. Every person, every organization, every institution can and should do more to help prevent such human tragedies. I'm committed, and so is my service committed, to doing more. Members of the police and justice system must do our part to address head on all systemic elements within our institution that contribute to the conditions which underpin such devastating events. We need to do more, we need to do it better, and we need to do it more effectively. We'll be relentless in our focus to do just this. I appreciate the question. I'll turn things back over to the moderator. Thank you very much, Chief Slowly. Uh, we will now be going to Kenyon Wallace at the Toronto Star. Hi there. Uh, thanks so much for taking my question. Uh, this is my first time participating in an Ottawa press conference. So uh, I, uh, I ask for your patience and your forgiveness if I'm revisiting um, a topic that has already been talked about earlier uh, this month. Um, but my, uh, my question concerns um, this issue with the K2V postal code as a hotspot. And uh, the reason I'm revisiting this is because my colleague May Warren and I recently reported on the Ontario Science Table's initial recommendations uh, for hotspots and how they were differing from those that the province ultimately came out with. And um, 
my question is for Dr. Etches. Um, on April 13th, uh, Christine Elliott said that, uh, in, in, she was speaking to reporters and she said that the K2V postal code, or, or I guess I should say forward sortation area, was designated a vaccination hotspot based on your recommendation. So is that true? Did you recommend that K2V be included in the province's hotspot list for vaccination? I, you know, I, I think the minister is, is correct that we work together on, on how the vaccine program with provincial direction is going to be implemented locally. And, uh, you know, I'm part of a group that has a conversation with ministry leaders every week on behalf of the Council of Medical Officers of Health, where we provide strategic advice. You know, does it make sense to focus on neighborhoods that have the higher rates of COVID? And yes, that's that's what we said, we should focus on areas that have higher rates of COVID. Um, so, so the principles in general, uh, you know, that is something where, where we, we did, did agree. Um, you know, in, in terms of a, a specific um, list, you know, when it came out, we've, we've got the list and, and we'll use the list uh, and adapt uh, to what's needed in our area. Um, and so, um, that that's really how it how it's working right now is we're we're focusing within those uh, forward sortation areas where the rates are higher uh, with a neighborhood based approach in Ottawa um, because we do see see a connection um, in terms of uh, the most effective use of vaccine you know, should should focus where we can protect people at greatest risk. So if I'm hearing you right, you did not recommend the k2v postal code is that correct i you know I, I think specifically probably not specifically but in in terms of the approach in general uh it is something that we support uh. okay do you do you know how they came up with like how they arrived at including the k2v as a hot spot i, I don't uh i don't um, it, it, I, I can't speak to that specifically. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I think the concept is valuable. Uh, we're, we're using that concept locally um, to, to really focus on neighborhoods. We know lower income neighborhoods that have higher rates of COVID are also where people who can't work from home are often living. Um, and so again, that's a phase where we're really starting to be able to grow um, at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you would, very would, much. Can I, can I ask a follow up? Is that possible? Sure. Sorry, would, if, if you were coming up with, like, let, let me put it this way, if you were coming up with, with hot spots for Ottawa Public Health, would you have included the K2V postal code? You know, in, in Ottawa, we find that actually the, they're, 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 called forward sortation areas, right? Yeah, first, sorry, that's what first, I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the first part of, of the postal code is actually too big. That's right, us. you're right, you're right. The K2V yeah. forward sortation area is what I mean. Would you have included that as a hotspot for vaccination if you were doing the list? It, it's a bit too big for, for us to focus on that whole area. Um, so, so we would, you know, we, we have specific postal codes where we would, would prefer to focus. And which that's the because ministry, there's which, which the ministry is supporting. So you know, yep. in terms of we're we're on the same page with the ministry in terms of we need to use local information, and they support us to do that. In, in terms of that particular okay. sorry. forward sorry. sortation sorry. area, though, would you have um, like in terms of its like like hot spots are supposed to be areas in which the infection risk is high or infections are already high. So Sorry. would K2V already be on your list or would it not have been on your list if you were doing it yourself? So as a large geographic area, there, there may be smaller, um, you know, areas that would be more, more of a priority. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Can everyone hear me? No. Okay, thank you very much. Very much. Uh, we will now be going to Catherine Fortin at uh, at TVA Gets. Oui, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Est-ce que vous m'entendez? 
Oui. On vous entend. Oui. En fait, la question a déjà été posée là, au tout début, mais c'est juste pour avoir une réaction en français là, concernant les barrages. Pourquoi on a décidé là, de changer de méthode? Puis est-ce que ça va être aussi efficace que la surveillance 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7? Mais peut-être je vais répondre et, et peut-être uh, Chief Slowly va uh, ajouter une réponse. Uh, certainement, uh, c'est évident, uh, lundi, que le système ne marche pas. Il y a des, des grands problèmes avec la circulation uh, sur les ponts, uh, plus de 10 km. Uh, et um, je suis content que Chief Slowly et son équipe aient décidé que ce n'est pas nécessaire d'avoir uh, des balages uh, 24 heures par, um, par 7 jours. Uh, ça coûte beaucoup de l'argent, plus de 100, uh, 100, uh, une 113 000 dollars, uh, et ça prend presque sans agent de police. Alors, euh, certainement, j'ai écrit une lettre à, à Mme Jones, euh, euh, le ministre qui est responsable pour cette activité, et je dis que, à mon avis, ce n'est pas nécessaire, ce n'est pas efficace, ça coûte beaucoup de l'argent, euh, et euh, je suis content que le chef de police d'Ottawa a déterminé que ce n'est pas nécessaire d'avoir des barrages à les cinq ponts et, et les deux autres places pour, euh, euh, c'est pas le mot en français, ferries. Uh, Chief Slowly, can you maybe just uh, offer a comment in terms of um, uh, why you've downsized from the 24-7 to um, more random spot checks? Merci. Uh, Chief Slowly, you are on mute. Thank you very much for the question. Um, as I explained earlier on, but I'll, I'll repeat again, uh, when the uh, uh, interprovincial border uh, security requests came in, our responsibility was to assess our ability to implement the order. That starts with first and foremost, understanding uh, the intended health outcomes uh, for our local context here in Ottawa and the unique circumstances that we have uh, across the border with Gatineau um, and in the immediate region around. Uh, we commenced discussions with Dr. Retches, Ottawa Public Health, uh, General Manager DeMonte and Bylaw, as well as our other city partners to better understand how the new measures and the interprovincial uh, border restrictions could contribute best to health outcomes. We did our best literally in real time to plan throughout Friday, Saturday, Sunday, several phone calls, joint planning meetings, joint risk assessment meetings with our core partners to establish um, by midnight, uh, Sunday night, go to public health. Our commitment to reevaluate at the end of each day has been maintained. As we completed the operations of the first day, it was clear to us from feedback um, that the overall effect of the operations was not improving public safety outcomes. So we immediately started to scale back on day two uh, and at the end of day two's operations, the review again determined another level of reduction in, in resources. We currently now have a substantially lower level of resources and a much more flexible deployment model, which allows for a better flow through of traffic throughout the day, particularly during the key morning rush hour period where the vast majority of residents from Gatineau and Quebec, particularly those who work as essential services and healthcare workers, are able to arrive at their work and make their contributions to positive health outcomes. We've reduced the risk to the community in regards to traffic safety, and we've reduced the health safety issues for our members and the community members, while still maintaining a very effective posture around the interprovincial borders to be able to achieve a measure of health outcomes around that extension. We'll continue to evaluate every single day, and we'll continue to evaluate the costs, evaluate the operational impacts and our other responsibilities as a police jurisdiction for Ottawa, but most importantly, to evaluate whether or not the overall operations are contributing to public health outcomes. We'll continue to work in support of Dr. Etches and the Ottawa Public Health team to make sure those evaluations are consistent, coordinated, and well communicated. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Catherine, vous aviez, vous aviez capté ça? 
Euh, oui, mais en fait, j'ai une question qui suit une parce que pour Mme Vera Chase, en lien avec les barrages, est-ce qu'on croit que euh, ce serait vraiment une mesure qui va avoir des impacts pour aider à faire baisser les, les cas de COVID-19 à Ottawa? Um, notre perspective, c'est que euh, santé publique, c'est que nous sommes une région où le niveau de COVID-19 et les tendances euh, sur les deux côtés de la rivière sont vraiment similaires. Uh, c'est important de réduire la mobilité et c'était uh, notre avis, uh, moi et le médecin-chef en santé publique à l'autre côté de la rivière, Dr. Brigitte Pinard. Nous sommes en contact régulièrement et on dit la même chose, rester chez eux, éviter uh, les, les voyages non essentiels. Mais concernant le, le, le danger de transmission uh, autour de la ville et entre les deux villes, c'était quelque chose qu'on vit avec parce que nous sommes une région. Euh, on a aussi la même chose avec euh, l'ouest les, les, euh, et l'est et le sud d'Ottawa. Nous sommes une région où euh, c'est difficile euh, de limiter la mobilité pour les travailleurs en santé. Uh, uh, C'est aussi important de considérer uh, l'impact sur nos hôpitaux quand leurs employés uh, est tard pour, pour le travail. Um, C'est pourquoi j'ai donné mon, mon soutien à le changement uh, de réduire les obstacles pour uh, les travailleurs en santé. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Catherine. We will now go to Sue Sharing from On the City from the Burbs. I don't believe Sue is still on the line. Sue, please speak up if you are. Okay. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Uh, this was a very long avail. Um, and uh, merci à tous pour votre temps. Have a great day. Bonne journée. See, thank you.